Let my tree bear good fruit so I can be used by you. You are hearing this song used by you from my dear friends, Tori and Shauna. You can find their latest album, Share Your Love, Volume 2, wherever you stream your favorite songs. I'm recording once again from my studios here in Hilliard, Ohio, powered by the Spot Athletics. I can't wait for you to meet today's guest. Thank you for listening. Make sure to like, share on all your platforms. For now, let's get into today's episode. All right, everybody, welcome to Unscripted from my studios here in Hilliard, Ohio, powered by the Spot Athletics. It's a Friday. It's a little crazy. We've had to do some juggling much more on my part than his. Why don't you introduce yourself and we'll go from there? Yeah, so my name is Oliver Asher and I'm president of Advancing Native Missions. And Aaron, it's it's great to be with you. Well, Oliver, it's a it, the timing could not be more perfect. My wife is leaving for a mission trip tomorrow morning. And I, I sent wow. our friend Lori that message just now. She's leaving for Honduras. I think it's her third time going to Honduras. So this is going to be a great conversation today. I can't <laughs> wait to get to dive in. But Oliver, welcome to Unscripted. Thank you, Aaron. And she'll come back changed. You can't go on a mission trip without coming back changed. That's awesome. Ooh. She does every time, and I'm I'm very envious of her because I've never gone on one. So anyway, we didn't get on to talk about that. You have a new book, and you are the president of Advancing Native Missions. So let's just start with your story. Where did all this happen? How did it start? Yeah, so I'll try to try to keep it not too long, Aaron. But basically, so my book's called Invincible Joy, and mm-hmm. you know, and and what I you know, would say is that really invincible joy is a person, his name is Jesus. And, you know, and that's been the source of my joy and my strength for my whole life. I'll just quickly give you yeah, a brief testimony. So I was born in Florida to a teenage mom. Dad was in prison. He was actually in Southern Florida when I was born, decided to escape to see me. And he was on a chain gang. A guard got to the end of the gang and he took off. A guard tried to shoot him, but missed him. And so he ran through something between South and North Florida called the Everglades. Yeah, ended up at a dairy farm outside of Tampa and was there for a couple months. And evidently, probably two or three months later, SWAT team came in, broke open the doors, windows, took him back to prison. And he was in a a prison cell for the next two years, uh, four by eight dark room, considered dangerous at that point. So anyway, but once he got out, Aaron, so it, that was kind of a, you know, kind of a rough beginning. But once he got out and uh, after a while, we ended up moving to Virginia. Uh, to Southwest Virginia. That's where his family is originally from. And so really just uh, moved into a trailer on the side of a mountain, started living kind of a hillbilly, you know, redneck life. I don't know if y'all have rednecks in Ohio, but we have plenty here in Virginia. And Absolutely. So, <laughs> so grew up in a, in what I call it a holler, a Rush Creek holler. So okay. when people would ask, how do I get your house? Just follow the hard road till it ends, follow the gravel road till it ends. And that's where we lived. And so, yeah, so just uh, kind of started fresh there. My dad, mom, bought a trailer, was living the the country life, you know, hillbilly life on the side of a mountain. And, and then what I was going to say is that when I was eight years old, my grandmother, Lily, shared the good news of Jesus with my mom, Carol. And then my mom, Carol, shared it with me and my brother and my sister. And so I have the same testimony as Timothy, that Paul tells Timothy in 2 Timothy 1 and 5, the same faith I saw in your grandmother, Lois, your mother, Eunice, I be in you. Mm. So I owe mm. my faith to my grandmother, Lily, and my mom, Carol. So, Mm -hmm. and and that really transformed my life here. And from there on, I mean, really God put me on his trajectory, I feel like. And so then, so life continued on. When I was 12 years old, our trailer burned down. So this little trailer, you know, country trailer that we had, everything we had, all our possessions in the world, it, it burned up. And so, yeah, so we had nothing. And I remember when my principal called me down to the office to tell me, you know, I was just happy that my mom was okay. And, you know, and, and that was it. I went home. I remember coming around the last bend in the road and seeing it. And it was just charred metal. You know, I mean, there's hardly anything there. So what we decided to do is move into a tool shed that we had on the property. We literally kept our tools. It only had one light bulb in the middle of the room. And that was it. No more electricity, no indoor plumbing, anything like that. There was actually an outhouse nearby. And so we were going to live in there for six months and save up some money, you know, make another down payment on a trailer. But six months turned into six years. So my entire like middle school and high school career was, you know, living in that shack. So, yeah, so it was, you know, so life on the one hand was certainly kind of rough. And, uh, you know, eventually we we, you know, piped in some water from, you know, a spring up the up the holler. But that was pretty much it. And while while 
you know, things at home were kind of rough. I was going to school, I was uh, playing football and, you know, my first football workouts, Aaron were lugging a chainsaw up and down the mountains with my dad. He was a woodcutter, logger. So yeah, so that was, you know, going up and down the mountains with a chainsaw, splitting all the wood with a 10 pound maul. Those were my first w- workouts. And so when our coach said, hey, why don't you come out for football? You know, I said, hey, yeah, let me, you know, I'd, I'd love to try that. And we had a great coach that moved in my junior year. He was an awesome Christian man. And just he he really, he, he led us to a district championship. I mean, we were terrible, Aaron. We were, in 20 years, we were we had four winning seasons. My eighth grade year, our rivals beat us 91 to zero. I mean, oh my I don't, yeah, I right. I know that's a reaction I always get. It's like, how, how can you Come even on. score that many points in a high school game, right? So we were horrible, but praise the Lord, you know, by his providence, you know, I was with a couple of good classes in a small school. We had seven through 12 country school, about 400 students. And so, yeah, so that's what really got me on the radar. And so my senior year, I was offered to play football at the University of Virginia. And so, I mean, neither of my parents had graduated from high school, you know, so to grow on to college was just, you know, beyond even their dreams. But I just, I know that God, you know, set that up for me. He got me out of the hollow to the University of Virginia. Best thing that happened to me there was actually not football or even getting a degree. It was meeting my wife, Andrea, and we married right after college. And then we actually went to the Dominican Republic for one year. This is like the late 80s. And where missionaries there for a year came back and began to raise a family in Charlottesville, Virginia. That's central Virginia, you know, home, home of the University of Virginia. But yeah, so we just started raising five kids. I was working as an engineer. And, you know, was just really, you know, just active in the local church. Andrea and I had tried to get involved in in ministry in a lot of different ways. She's first generation Hungarian American. We thought maybe we'll go to Hungary, plant a church. That didn't work out. Thought about seminary, thought about pastoring. None of that worked out. So I just continued to work as an engineer. Actually went back to school, got my master's in engineering. So I was actually a civil engineer with a with a emphasis in environmental engineering. And so was going down that path. And then Aaron, something really strange happened to me. I had a dream that I was laid off from my job. And two days later, it came true. I was laid off. Yeah. And and so I said, okay, Lord, you got my attention. You know, what's next? What are you, you know, what are you doing? And so he, yeah, so he just was working in our lives. We knew that. By now we had four children, you know, had a home. And we, but we were going to church with a, a, a missionary named Bo Barreto, and he had started an organization called Advancing Native Missions. And so this is 1996. He had started in 1992. When he found out I was in transition, he said, hey, why don't you come by, see what we do? So Aaron, when I went by the ministry, number one, what attracted me was a vision, Matthew 24, 14, when the gospel of the kingdom has been preached throughout the earth, which is geographical, for and all nations have heard the gospel the you know the 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 nations are ethnos people groups then the end will come right mm-hmm. and so we know that's a good ending jesus comes back and rules and reigns so i love the vision but the mission was what really intrigued me and what they did is rather than sending out westerners they went into these countries where there were unreached peoples and they partnered with local ministries and so the mission was to encourage to equip to advocate for strategic, fruitful indigenous missionaries that are reaching the least reach and unreached. So of course, I was very attracted to that. And that was a new paradigm of missions for me. And then just the love that they had for each other. So Aaron, my wife and I, we prayed about it, you know, said, Lord, is this a path? And that, and that was 26 years ago. So we got on that path 26 years ago. And so we've been on it since. So that, in summary, is, is how I you know, got to where I am today. So we're all, we're giving you guys the Cliff Notes version for anybody listening because we're on a time short window, and I'm so honored that you even gave us the time that you gave us today because I know you're going, you know, on <laughs> probably a lot of interviews today, but incredible. Let me start here. What are the links, just before we get buried in a lot of the conversation, because there's a lot of what I want to unpack with you, what are the links that people can find the book and then you guys? Yes. So my book is oliverasher.com. And also on Instagram and Facebook, it's Oliver Asher Official. So you can go to, you know, at Oliver Asher Official and find me there. Then also with for Advancing Native Missions, we are, our website is advancingnativemissions.com. And then, of course, Facebook, Instagram, everything else is Advancing Native Missions. So that's, yeah, so those are the two, awesome. two ways to, to find me and, and to find my 
I didn't want to get that to get lost in our conversation. So, all right, so where where are you right now, physically? So physically, I'm in Nefton, Virginia, which is about 20 minutes west of Charlottesville, Virginia. Yeah. And do you? I assume you're making a lot of mission trips, right? So I, so we do. We we especially love to assist churches in making mission trips. So we right now we probably have 15 to 20 churches that are booked for this year to go on mission trips because again we love to partner the church here in the US with the church around the world capital C and so we we do a lot of mission trips now for me personally I probably do air probably one or two mission trips a year again those are more strategic my you know my forte really is more traveling in the US and really trying to get the word out you know about what the Lord's doing and we also we have what are called regional directors and so we have nine regions and we have regional directors who really connect us with all of those regions. So they travel, you know, more than I do. And then then our church relations team, Brian and Mindy Mullins, they lead our churches. And so they travel more than I do. So, yeah, I, you know, in all these years, I've probably, you know, been to 40 or 50 nations. And again, you know, for a boy from the holler, you know, who has a brother who's never been on right. an airplane, right. uh, you know, <laughs> right. right. so it's, yeah. So, but, but yeah, so we, we do a lot of traveling though, for sure. Well, I have a feeling most of the people listening, including myself. So that wasn't any, certainly not a judgment on my part because I've never been on one. Yeah. My wife's been on multiple and we'll leave again on Saturday for another awesome. one. And so yeah. I think, <clears throat> I think we all have a heart for missions, but I don't know if we all take it to that place where we actually go. Um, I think, you know, we just had Mother's Day not too long ago. I think moms and grandmothers, wouldn't, wouldn't you say based on what your story was there that, that thank God for our moms and our grandmas, because I don't know the percentage, I'm sure there's a study out there, but how many of us came to faith because our moms and our grandmas and their faith? Would you say that's true? Yes, absolutely. You know, thank God for praying grandmas and praying mamas, right? I mean, my goodness, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, if Paul was even telling Timothy, you know, back in the day that he was, you know, had the same faith as his grandma and mom and here today, like you said, I mean, I, I wouldn't be where I am. And so, and I love to share that testimony because anything that I do, you know, for the Lord's kingdom and building it, you know, they, they also get credit because they're the ones who really instilled a deep love, you know, for Jesus. I mean, my grandma, she couldn't read or write. I mean, she was very country. She was like probably number 13 and, you know, and and her family, she had 12 children herself, very poor, uneducated, but man, she loved Jesus. Everything Mm. she did, everything she talked about just was centered around Jesus, you know? And so that was the influence I had. And like, and of course that rubbed off on my mom. And so every time the church doors were open, man, we were there, you know, if it was Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday revival for a week or two, whatever it was, you know, we, we, we were there. Wasn't always, you know, the most fun as a kid, you know, you didn't always necessarily want to be there, but man, I'm so glad that, you know, I have that heritage. We get that opportunity to look through the rear view and in our lives and, and, yeah be thankful for what they'd invested, but in the windshield at the time, it didn't make sense. Like, it's just annoying, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> at least for me. At yeah. least for me. As a child, but, yeah. You know, you're right. like, every night, oh my goodness. Seriously, every but, time the doors are open, we were there. But, exactly, yeah. yeah <laughs> now I, now I look back and I'm thankful. So where did yeah. you find your joy? You mentioned a lot of circumstances, a lot of circumstances that none of us would would even begin to understand. Where did you yeah. find your joy? So, so yeah, Aaron. And, and one thing that I did mention as well, when we were in that shack, so my, my eight year old, almost nine year old sister was killed in a car accident. So, Jeez. you know, so we had a trailer burning down. She was killed. You know, it, it was my dad's, you know, work was off and on. And, and so it, it was a hard time. It was a dark time. I mean, in many ways, and certainly the, the, the you know, the worst day of my life is you know, hearing the news that my sister had died. But you know what, Aaron, again, because I had been you know, introduced to Jesus. And, and when I heard the good news there, when I heard that the Savior left heaven and lived a sinless life and, and died a horrible cross, I mean, died a horrible death on the cross and took my sins, gave me his righteousness, rose from the dead. You know, I knew even as a boy, right, I knew I was a sinner. I'd, you know, already beaten up my brother, said bad words. I'd stole some pencils from the Piggly Wiggly. My mom made me take them back, you know, and apologize to the manager. <laughs> so, you know, I knew I was a sinner, Aaron. And, and, and yeah. when I heard the good news, and so really that's what stuck with me, Aaron, is just through all of that, you know, it's like, because Jesus was in us, it was okay. You know, even for my family, we're like, you know, we're going to get through this. We're going to be okay. We, we know, you know, invincible joy. And it really is a person whose name's Jesus. And uh, that, 
that was what got me through, you know, everything. And, and not only was he Lord and Savior and King and God, but really my best friend, you know, and, and has been that now for 50 years. And so, yeah, it, it all goes back to just, you know, him and him providing that, that love, peace, joy, every fruit of the Holy Spirit, you know, through, through me and through our lives. Well, you got to come back because I know we're on a, a short window today and I have so many more questions. <laughs> I have so much to unpack. I'll be happy right. to. Let me ask you this. We live in a very toxic world. We live in, you were a, a TV Fox News station away from yeah. just being frustrated, a TikTok, a DM, an Instagram. We, we're in a social media world. They're everything, we're inundated with negativity. Yeah. Uh, we're, in, we're inundated with frustration. And that's just here. That's not even globally where you, you've poured your heart into missions where those people, honestly, anyone that goes on a mission trip, I know they come home and they're like, we have it so wrong. Like yeah. we're, we're so blessed and rich and we don't, and I'm sorry, I'm on a soapbox now, but we have way more than we even can begin to fathom when we go to another place where they don't have what we have. So all that to say, what's your recommendation for people, someone listening to this today in their car on, not on a mission trip, how do they find joy? Yes. So, so Aaron, like you said, we, we have it so good here. Right. You know, God has been so kind. And and I would say that, first of all, if you, you know, the, the way to to under, start to understand, you know, the, 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 the joy that we have and, and again, every, all the good things that we have is, you know, for us, we really offer three ways to get involved is through praying and giving and going. So like you said, certainly one way is to, to go on a mission trip. That will open your eyes better than anything else. But just day to day, Aaron, for those of us living here, and maybe we'll never, maybe, I mean, there are those that are not called, you know, all of us can pray, some of us can give, some of us can go. But here is how I do it, Aaron. I mean, really, you know, joy is a choice too. You know, when you Mm. wake up in the morning, it's like, you know, you, you know, you, if the weather is bad, you know, if the dog chewed up your shoe or whatever it is, you know, you can have a bad start to the day and, you know, and, it, and it's not going to be a joyful day. But what I find that helps me, Aaron, is just having those daily routines, you know, getting up, getting in the word, you know, filling myself up, right? Especially the word. When I read, you know, Romans 8, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. All things happen for good to those that are called by God. You know, those that he's foreknown, predestined, called and justified and glorified. You know, what shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? So really, Aaron, for me, it's getting up and getting filled with the word, you know, and really and talking to myself, you know, you know, talking affirmations, declarations and the truth of, you know, that, you know, the enemy is always going to be lying to us. Right. And, And you're right, especially in our world through social media, through so many different contexts. But if we can really, you know, ground ourselves again, especially in the Word of God, you know, fill us, fill ourselves up with the Word of God. Of course, prayer, fellowship with Jesus, especially in the morning, you know, that's going to give us a good start to the day, and then we're going to yeah. be able to go out and whatever comes our way, you know, we can handle it. But I really feel like that's where it starts, is just having those good daily habits, you know. And, and and Aaron, being an athlete, you know, I was used to that. You know, I knew, you know, if we were going to win the championship in December. Uh, That started on January 1st at 6 a.m. in the weight room, you know, and I was there four or five days a week. And by the time August two days came, you know, you were ready. And then it was going to be a good season because you put on 15 pounds of muscle. You know, you were faster, bigger, stronger. And then you would play through the year, you know, get to the championship game, hopefully win it. But it all started January 1. You know, and it's the same, I believe, with our Christian walk. You know, that if we're going to face the devil, the temptations, everything he throws at us, you know, that really starts with those daily routines. And so I'm a big believer in, the, you know, the, developing those good daily habits that will help us to overcome. Yeah. It's so funny because, again, I hate to keep mentioning it, but she is leaving tomorrow. My wife does the same thing. She's up every yeah. morning. She has a very yeah. similar breakfast every morning. She spends time in the words. She does her journaling. She invests her morning and gets her mind right. You know, I'm yeah. all over the place. I'm a train wreck. <laughs> and, but my wife, who who has that heart. And the other thing I would say is if anyone's listening, you don't necessarily have to hop on a plane. Because the other thing that she does is she goes downtown Columbus and she serves homeless every Monday night, sometimes on a Tuesday night. She's very involved in a local outreach where, you know, we don't have to hop on a plane to help people that are at a place that we're not. So I just want to share that very quickly. So I got to brag on my wife, but uh, because I think this will speak to her very, very, very intimately. So I know our our time is short. Give me all the links again. And then you mentioned this quickly, but let's start with how can people support you? What are the links? 
So, so the best way to support us is to go to advancingnativemissions.com. And it's very straightforward there, you know, front page. There are donation buttons. There's certainly, and there are also lots of prayer resources. We'd love to offer, you know, opportunities for prayer. And so they can, you know, from there they can pray, they can give. Again, if if somebody would be interested in a trip, we can also, you know, help people to go. And like I said, Aaron, those are really the, you know, three, we try to keep it simple. Three ways to, you know, get involved, you know, is to pray, give and go. And so advancingnativemissions.com. And then also to learn more about my book, if you want my book, we also have a study series, a six week study series that goes along with it. And that you can find at uh, oliverasher.com. Okay. So those are the two. And then the socials, you mentioned some socials. Yeah. So the socials, so my socials are under Oliver Asher official. So again, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, if you type that in, you'll, you'll find me. And then also advancing native missions would be under the name advancing native missions. And again, we're on all the social media platforms. Okay. Last thing I'm going to ask you, somebody's driving their car on their treadmill, walking their dog, where people, whatever people listen to podcasts, how can they pray for you right now? this very moment while they're doing whatever the activities that they're doing, what can they, how can they pray for you? And hopefully they keep their eyes open and they're driving, but <laughs> that's right. <laughs> how can they pray for open. you? That's right. Yeah. Just, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. It's, yeah. well, it's kind of interesting. So, so actually, you know, right after I get off this podcast, I'm going to be traveling to Washington, DC. We're about two hours South of DC. Mm-hmm. We're going to actually be having dinner at the ambassador's house for Pakistan. Okay. So yeah. And it's one of our ministry partners, we have 290 ministry partners in over 100 countries there, and, and this one is a partner in Pakistan, and they have helped to give Bibles away. They've helped to in the relief efforts when they had terrible floods in Pakistan. So he's invited us to, yeah, come together, you know, to have dinner at this brother's house. So I would say, first of all, just loving favor there, and, you know, we'd love to be a witness to this ambassador. And then also just, you know, in general, that for our partners especially, you know, we're they're the heroes. You know, these uh, we're serving, you know, these there are actually over 13,000 native missionaries in over 100 countries. And wow. so they're on the front lines. They're, you know, fighting, scraping, you know, getting the gospel to the unreached. And that really is the difference between us, maybe in a lot of other missions organizations is we're on the we like to be on the cutting edge, the, the bloody edge of missions on, you know, in those areas that have we're it's hard to believe, Aaron, there are people that have never heard the sweet name of Jesus. They've right. never celebrated Christmas. They've never, they've never known, of course, about Easter. So, we, you know, so that's what we're all about. We want, to, we want to see the Great Commission completed, Aaron. We believe in our time, you know, with the missionaries, with technology, that it can happen. And so that's, you know, that's the ultimate prayer is Lord use us. And again, go on our website, get those prayer resources, pray for us, pray for our partners. We'd appreciate it. So if you do hear this and you are interested in that, find a local church, because I guarantee you most local churches, if not all local churches, are doing some sort of missions, even if it's locally in their own city, they're doing something. In the meantime, please visit the other two websites. Last time, the other two websites for everybody. AdvancingNativeMissions.com and OliverAsher.com. All right, brother, I'm going to be praying for you and you got to promise to come back. I'll, yes. I, I won't pray for you unless you do promise to come back. <laughs> then I promise that? to come back because right, I want the go. prayer. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You got my prayers. You, I know you got. I know you got to hop a flight. Thanks so much for dealing with technology today. And Thank you, uh, man, Aaron. God bless everything that you're doing. My prayers are with you, my friend. Thank you, brother. Really Absolutely. appreciate you. No Thank worries. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to the latest episode of the Unscripted Podcast. Please remember to like and share. We'll be back soon with another amazing guest. But until then, remember to live each day unscripted. I want-